looking at the screen. Nice. So this is you. So you can just wave, read them, everything in three dimensional, change the angle. So whenever you want, this is what's it's okay. What's it's it's Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after we're done with testing, you can do something fun. You know? All right guys, so today I'm going to be bringing you guys something that's new and exciting, something that is pretty unique to my fellowship here at Texas Back, and that is their gait analysis biomechanical lab. So with the development of videography and cinematography, it became possible to capture image sequences of the human gait that were really not noticeable with the human eye before this. A key benefit of the emotion analysis is that it allows us to improve our clinical decision making process. Using the objective data from the lab here, we can utilize that information to alter and to come up with better treatment plans for our patients with spinal pathology. So we're gonna to talk to Dr. Hadas, who's the director of the lab here, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about the lab, and then I'm actually going to try the gait analysis uh, today myself, so. All right, so we got Dr. Hadas here, who's the director of the Spine Gait uh, Biomechanics Lab. Dr. Hadas, uh, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. good. You thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for having me in your lab today. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the lab and uh, maybe show us around a little bit? Yes, absolutely. So we opened the lab about five years ago, okay? And the goal of the lab is to generate function outcomes about the patients before and after an intervention. We have a couple of cool tools in the lab. The first one is a human motion capture, so like all the room surrounded by uh, infrared cameras. We put little sensors on you like we had, and those cameras can pick up the location of those sensors. Mm -hmm. With those sensors, we can basically map up your whole body. We can tell you on the spot how fast are you walking, your step length, your step uh, width, how much you off balance, how much you swing while you're standing, your lifting mechanism, your sit to stand mechanism, and et cetera, et cetera. So you're using this uh, data, so you get a baseline before patients undergo surgery and then after surgery, and then basically kind of tells you how well the patients did in surgery, is that kind of? This is correct, and then on top of that, we're collecting some healthy control data, like yourself, uh -huh. then we're comparing our age match and comparing our, our patients' data to the healthy control. So we see how good they are and how far they are from the norm, and how soon they can go back to our normal life, basically. Sweet. Yeah. Can you uh, show us around the, uh, the uh, level? Yes. Two type of sensor, one for the upper extremity and one extra one we're putting for the spine. This is we're putting on the spinal process of each vertebra. You can see more detailed information how the spine is, uh, is moving. Uh, with this, we're putting like 51 of this on you, mapping from your feet all the way up. Second type of sensors, we have um, surface dynamic EMG sensors. So you simply put those on your muscles. Every time you contract, you can see some muscle activity on the screen. So uh, this sensor could track you about a radius of 50, um, uh, 50 feet, basically, around. So the patients, and they're walking, standing, lifting, and without looking at them, we can tell you exactly uh, how much muscle activity they're using, timing of the muscle, looking for co-contraction uh, between muscles, and uh, time of onset, basically. Uh, third one we have with those uh, force plates embedded in the floor. So whenever our patients are walking, we ask them to actually to step on those squares. Uh, this one can basically generate ground reaction force and forces. Uh, this one can quantify the amount of pressure you got on your butt cheeks and, and on your thighs. So every time you're sitting, we can actually tell you if you're uh, leaning more on one side compared to the other, or you are pretty symmetrical. Uh, we also quantify how you move from sitting to standing, uh, basically. Because whenever we're doing this test, we have you standing on those force plates. So we have a pressure, measuring your uh, forces on the legs and on your butt cheeks together. Uh, we're the first one actually to quantify uh, this thing. You should, in the next couple of months, you should see a uh, couple of papers coming out um, about this thing. Uh, like I said before, this is very uh, important for our unilateral patients, uh, patients with unilateral disorder, like a stenosis, sacroiliac dysfunction, hip uh, osteoarthritis, and other you know, disease, basically. A couple of our recent work we did, we, we presented this work in the national, international uh, conferences. Um, we have a couple of cool stuff we're looking. So first one is uh, EMG activity. So the sensor you saw, we can actually um, track these sensors 
Taking a couple of mathematical steps, we can actually quantify the rectifying EMG, tell you the magnitude basically, taking linear envelope, tell you how much muscles we're looking at different peaks, and then integrate the EMG as the overall accumulate muscle activity. So actually you can quantify how much muscle you use. We can look on the tonic whenever the muscle is off, whenever it's on, and, uh, and other activities. Next project we, uh, we're doing is actually uh, try to figure out what is the best walking aids for our patients, a traditional walker or uh, walking sticks or walking poles basically. Uh, what we found in this study, we did a study about on adult deformity patients before and after surgery. And what we find, uh, a couple of things, that first of all, walker yes. is a safer, okay? Uh, it's easy to use, basically, it's more common, but this is a forward, so sometimes we see actually that patients are chasing the walker and they're walking faster than the plane or faster than the body is ready. Uh, clearly, what you can see in the result here, look on the posture of those patients. You see how those uh, two leaning forward by using the walker, basically, compared to using a walking pole. The walking pole also gives you a natural arm swing, which allowed you a natural rotation of your trunk and, uh, and more engagement of your core muscles, basically. So based on this study, we actually uh, recommended to use more walking sticks compared to a walker if the patient is, um, uh, if the patient is ready for the walking sticks. Next one, this is what actually the patient's number one in the lab. Uh, 20 years old kid from uh, Ethiopia. He came here on a mission with Dr. Bellinger. Um, Dr. Bellinger going, and Dr. Lehman going once a year to Ethiopia and Uganda and then um, operating on many kids and adults uh, as possible in a period of two or three weeks. Uh, this one was one of the very uh, complex surgery they couldn't do over there. They actually were able to raise some funding and bring the kids over here to be with us in two months. He actually was the patient's first patient in the lab. Uh, 20 years old um, mm -hmm. male, basically with severe ankylosis spondylolisthesis. You can see his X-ray over here. Before surgery, while he was sitting, you can see uh, you couldn't fit him on the machine while he's standing. This is a picture before, and you can see him one month after surgery, uh, full realignment of this thing. So what we did, we did like full gait analysis on him. You can see this patient walk much faster, uh, much faster with a longer step length, a uh, narrow type of support. His ground action force got normalized and all his angles got more normalized. And you know, one picture uh, can tell you <laughs> a lot more. This is the uh, Ethiopian kid we had, and you see how this kid is bent over. Uh, three dimensional. So you see this is how, how he actually he walked. Uh, I want to show you something uh, pretty cool. So when the guy came here, we actually used one, uh, one stick. Uh, this is the kid a month after surgery. You see how uh, he's straightforward. Here you go. Here we can quantify that and show you how he's walking. So you clearly see his ground shift force are symmetrical for both legs, and and, and surgery did the great for him basically. So best outcome we can get. So we saw the x-ray, we saw how surgery did good for him, but now we can actually quantify his yeah. function and see how this guy walking better, how he's more stable, how he's more realigned, and all the ground action force, EMG, uh, neuromuscular activity, everything got normalized. So the only thing we see is uh, basically the dots on you, right? Uh, and what Bethany is doing right now, she's actually uh, you know, labeling or telling the computer which marker is which, and then she's connecting all the dots together. So the four squares over here are the one that uh, you see on your head. Everything you see in blue are the sensors on your back, basically. Uh, everything you see in red are the sensors on your left side. So this is uh, your left arm. Uh, so everything you see in green are sensors on your right side. This is your two arms, basically looking from the back. Everything is three dimensional, so you can change the angles and everything. Uh, we put some extra marker for the spine because we're looking for more details, information about the spine. Uh, 
Uh, this is the one on your ASIS and Ilya Quest. Left leg. Good. And slowly and surely you're getting a stick, man. Good. Good. Turn around. So every time you're going to walk, this is what we're going to see. This is going to change angles a little bit. You can see the stick line is three dimensional. basically how our patients are, are moving and how efficient while they, they move. The more patients are swaying, we know the less efficient they're waste, uh, wasting more muscle activity um, during the test. Uh, second thing we're measuring, we're measuring um, pressure dis distribution. 30 how much pressure and forces uh, patients are, are, are using to stand and if they prefer to lean on one side more compared to the other. Most of our patients have some uh, st uh, sciatic pain or leg pain and tend to stay away from the painful leg while overloading the healthy leg. So for our patients, I can show some videos, mm -hmm. and you saw, I think on Friday, they literally like swaying and you know what. So the bigger the kind of economy, mm -hmm. the less efficient they are. Oh, so, so this is what you get the kind of economy? Yes, exactly. So what we're looking at is the range of sway of your center of your head uh -huh. and your center of mass. Oh, okay. If you put a little dot, like I tell people, if you put, put a pencil on your head, yeah. the piece of paper up here, then the amount you sway, gotcha. that's like how we, we look at the distance that you sway and also the total length of that line. So, yeah. Uh, so again, another way to quantify it and see how surgery is doing good or not good to the patients. So well, with the technology we're using, we're doing the Roman test and all this uh, human motion capture, we're actually able to uh, First, to quantify the kind of economy. This is used by uh, Professor John de Doucet from French. He's a big surgeon uh, doing all the 40. He mentioned 45 more seconds. Kind of economy all the time. And going to all these meetings and see uh, people mentioning, but nobody actually quantified that. So with these tools, we actually were able just to quantify and create and generate a custom kind of economy for each of our patients. Yeah. And then compare 30 more it seconds. Before and after intervention and compare it to health control and see how it goes up the norm. In layman's terms, for people who may not know what cone of economy is, yeah. do you explain that? It basically is the opposite cone that's showing basically how much you are swaying. So our yeah. feet stay uh, stuck to the ground, and our head more is seconds. swaying a little bit. So the more you sway, the less efficient you are, mm. uh, and more energy is wasted, right? Because if you swing all the way forward, you have to use your muscles to get back to the center. Very important sponsor. Yes, this is for so the next one is a lifting I test. Got no, no, no. No. <laughs> no, maybe, but not that for all patients. So the lifting test, we're gonna look on your lifting style, okay. basically. And whenever you're lifting, uh -huh. using more your knees, okay. your hips, especially for our patients who have a leg pain, low back pain, it's pretty tough for them to pick up uh, this box. So what's gonna happen, you're gonna sit on the same uh, way, right leg over here, uh, left leg over here, you're gonna hold the box over here, okay? And you're gonna stay it up uh, over here. That's okay. playing squat. Good. We're going to give you instructions. Okay. Do whatever you want to do, basically. Right. So, like I said, we're analyzing lifting style. We want to see if lifting style is changing in proper progression. Okay. So, for our patients, we usually put like 10 to 5 pounds, mm -hmm. basically. It depends. For you, put 20. Uh, if it's too light, if you do more than you know, like 5 more pounds, if it's too heavy. I'm pretty okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, let's try it. Uh, let's try it down. First, I look straight forward. So, you start like that, basically. When you say go, you go down, squat, put it over here. Can I look down? Okay. Yes, yeah, then you can look. Uh, whenever I said go, you can do whatever you want. That's the initial lift. We're ready? Order? Okay, ready? And go. And, uh, it looks right forward. And stop. Ready? And go. Scoot to your right. Okay, sit down. Hands to your left. Three seconds. One, two, three, and go. And scoot to your left. And you can relax. So again, see the stand style basically. So we see how you are, it's pretty healthy. You just stand up, use the squat basically, and stand up. Like I said, patients are tend to lean forward, tend to use uh, the chair, tend to lean one with some or the other. And the cool part, we actually have the pressure of the feet. So we can see if they're using one is squatting. So we have the pressure of the thigh, and if you're squatting, we tell you exactly if you're squatting more like symmetrical or more lean to one side. Okay. Push-ups. Yeah. One, two. You're going for 100? 
Uh, I'm good for a thousand. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> All right, Dr. Hadas, thank you so much for letting me uh, come you. in the lab today and learning more about, you know, the wonderful things that you guys are doing. I think as a spine surgeon, you know, this can be another, you know, tool in our tool bag to help us assess how well patients are doing after surgery and how far they progress from pre-surgery to after surgery. So I think it's, you know, next level technology and I think it's something that uh, has really great promise for the future. So I just want to say thank you for yeah. uh, allowing me to join your lab today. Thank you. We're looking for our bright future together. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Everyone, thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys learned something. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.